Now, let's talk about priesthood for a moment. Um, it was Elder and Sister Renland. We've talked about this before, but Elder and Sister Renland, in their book about the Melchizedek priesthood, Elder and Sister Renland use this beautiful analogy of the earth. And then they use the analogy, if you if you go out and you pick up a little handful of dirt and you hold it, what do you say? Here's a little bit of earth. I'm, I'm holding the earth. But you don't imply that you're holding all of the earth in your hand, whereas God, who is sovereign and the God of the universe, he, he even uses that analogy when he says, worlds without number have I made, and mine hand can hold them, and mine eye can pierce them. I know that I hold them all in my hand. But what does he give us? He gives a portion of that bigger earth. Well, if you translate that into a different area and say God's power is defined as the priesthood, the expansive, all-encompassing power of God to do all of God's work with all of the keys and the rights and the privileges and the authority, that would be called the priesthood of God, but what does he do? He gives us portions. He gives us access to his power, and we can then function in that power. Now, in the hierarchical church, as outlined in section 107, what we see is that he defines some priesthood offices to which men can be ordained, some keys of the priesthood which can be conferred <clears throat> on people, and then you get – Men or women. Men or women have this ability to function in the power of the priesthood, and we've had some beautiful talks given in General Conference from President Ballard, President Oaks, President Nelson, and others talking about if you're functioning in a church calling, you are using the power of the priesthood, because there is no other power from God to do God's work, and his work and his glory is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. Any ministering, any nurturing, any, any speaking, any teaching, anything we do, is done with that power of God given to us on the earth. Now stop and translate that for just a moment into a home setting. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to give any specifics, but there have been countless occasions when one child or another in our home has been struggling with something, whether it be emotionally or physically or mentally or spiritually with temptation and, and other struggles, and I have watched as my dear wife has taken those children who are struggling under her wing and brought them into her, into her power where she'll listen to them and she'll counsel with them and she'll pray with them and she'll read scriptures with them and sometimes she'll just let them talk and then express confidence in them. The best way to describe it is I have watched the power of our heavenly parents manifest over and over and over again as my wife has interacted with our children in moments of need. What power is that? It's not, it's not some ethereal, no-named power that's somewhere out there in, in the universe. It's priesthood power given to, to us to, to bless lives. Her very presence, just the fact that she's there, her spirit, her soul with this child, she becomes this shield of faith as she's helping that child manufacture their own shield of faith. Um, it's as if her very presence is pushing back the forces of darkness and the forces of evil to help build up that child. Now, that's in a home setting. Think about every calling in the ward or in the stake or in the church for that matter. Somebody is called 
to do something. Well, what are they called to do? It's ultimately to push back the forces of darkness and to chase darkness from among people and to bring light and to be that refuge and to, to, to fortify their faith.